welcome back to an episode of The History Rescuer. Today I'm going to be blending my love of history with my love of fashion, as per usual, and I'm going to be actually starting on a project that I've had in mind for literally years. Something new and different for me! The project itself is a 1770s, 1780s robe à la française. The robe à la française is a mainstay fashion icon. If you think of a silhouette associated with Marie Antoinette or the Court of Versailles, this is absolutely that dress. It is uh, regarded in many fashion circles as being the most iconic silhouette shape of historical feminine beauty of all time. It is just instantly recognisable as ultimate princess dress, basically. I found this incredible purple pink silk taffeta in a fabric cast off store and I bought seven or eight meters of it hoping that I would just get enough to make a robe la française gown but I knew at the time that I didn't have the skill set to make it and I also knew that I needed to make the undergarments so today I am finally going to start biting the bullet and putting together the uh, structural undergarments that need to go with this particular kind of dress. Uh, I made a pair of stays a few years ago. It was my first fully like hand-sewn project that I've done ever. I used an American Duchess pattern and so in the same vein, I'm now gonna make my panniers, or panniers, as if you read it verbatim, panniers, panier, which are essentially the big hoop side bustles that go underneath the dress to give it that beautiful wide, stealing a plasma TV screen sort of shape, wide at the sides and then flat and beautifully structural um, on, a, on a profile silhouette. So I'm going to be making paniers today, or paniers today. There's going to be a million pronunciations. I'm just going to apologize in advance. Hopefully one of you can tell me in the comments which one I actually get right. Um, wonderful. So let's get going. <laughs> So what I intend to do is make these two items today. I think I might also make a bum pad at some point fairly soon as well, which is something that was applied in earlier outfits. So like the English gown would have a bum roll underneath it instead. And it's just a way of kicking out those hips. I do not intend to use this fabric. However, you can see that it's got this incredible pinky blue purple shine to it that'll really catch the light beautifully. This is the fabric that I picked out for the uh, final fashion gown that's going to go over the top of the panniers. And that's going to be done in a later part. So this is gonna be a several part video as I produce this outfit. So be sure to come back for part two and three. So the first thing I need to do is cut out my pattern pieces. Panniers changed size significantly and kind of shape over uh, the decades that Robe la Française were worn. In fact, you can see in several historical uh, newspapers of the time, satirical accounts that make fun of women's fashion and how you wouldn't be popular unless you, your head was touching the uh, ceiling of a doorway and you couldn't fit through due to the broadness of your dress's panniers. And so I followed roughly the guide in American Duchess. I ended up making them slightly wider than uh, what they suggested because I did want to create a really quite dramatic silhouette and uh, I think that that ultimately worked out well. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. So I'm just measuring up the piece of scrap fabric that I've got here and folding it in half. I'm actually just sort of squaring it off at this point. I wanted to make sure that I got them as, uh, as exactly the same as possible. So there's a lot of measuring and measuring again and cutting in this little area. There was also a lot of fussing and proofing and f messing with it to try and get it as close to square as possible so I had a good scrap to work with. Uh, this fabric was actually used to make a vintage tea dress uh, from the 1950s at one point and this was just a leftover cut of it so I thought it was a lovely um, piece of fabric to use for this project. The American Duchess pattern shown in the book for panniers indicates that it's got a slight curve at the top of each of the panniers. So you can see that I've just cut that V there to uh, create that curve and I'm just trimming them down now to size to make sure that they both 
are as close again to the same as possible. I'm getting that curve right and now I'm just lining it up so that I can cut the uh, central slit where the pocket hole goes. And so before you start sewing, this is the rough sort of shape you want your panniers to make. So with historical sewing, a lot of the focus is often on how accurate you can make items and that includes using um, historically accurate skills and techniques. For me, you know, there's, there's a, look, there's a lot of difference in the community in regards to how much of a focus is on that accuracy. Um, for me, I really am quite rough and ready when it comes to this sort of stuff. I tend to think that if it's not an external facing seam, or something like that, or it's not going to um, impact the overall drape or shape of the item and not compromise the accuracy in that regard, then I think go for it and sew it on machine. So for me, I'm going to be making these panniers almost entirely on machine. Um, it also means that I can then focus on other aspects of the panniers, like I can add uh, enhanced detail work to them that I otherwise wouldn't bother with if I was making it by hand because it's just quite labor intensive and time consuming for me to do otherwise. So here I am just sewing the bottom hem so that it sits straight and flat and then I have cut a small uh, t-shape in the bottom of the center pocket seams and I am just sort of sewing up the sides of those, folding over and sewing up the sides so that it's got a clean edge for that pocket. Once I had cleanly sewn the sides of the pocket, I then used a satin stitch to uh, seal up that bottom edge of the pocket so that it didn't end up ripping under any uh, pressure. So for the burning channels, I have this dark green, thick sort of cotton tape that I'm going to use because the um, the boning channels that I'm going to be making will need to be quite thick in order to keep the uh, boning from busting out and so that'll be nice and supportive. For the exterior waist um, ties and thigh, thigh ties, so the bottom ties, I'm going to use this really pretty sort of green ribbon because it'll go nice with the uh, floral pattern that I've got going on and uh, it'll just give it that little lift of prettiness that I would like it to have. Adding the boning channels was super easy. I started with the bottom most boning channel and I gave myself a one to two millimeter seam allowance on either side of the boning channel and uh, I spaced them out evenly. My camera fell over part way through filming this process but essentially what I did was I fed the uh, boning into the boning channel and I fed it all the way to the end and then I kind of scrunched it up a little bit to give it a centimeter allowance, uh, trimmed it and then pushed it back through so that I would be able to hem the side properly without hitting the boning. So I've done the two sides. I've added only one row of ribbons at this point. I'm gonna add the top ribbons shortly. The tops have been pleated so that they will actually fit my waist now. And I need to add two rows of inner lacing so that it sits flush on my hips and doesn't just sort of swallow in on my body. And then I need to also add the top waist tape. So that'll be what I'm doing now.
this is how they're going so far. I have done one set of tabs on the inside to pull it into the right shape. I think this is looking pretty darn good, all things considered. I think I might add, I was debating whether I add the second set of tabs, but I think I will just to try and give it more of that out there as opposed to pulling in around me sort of shape. They do look very funky and hilarious over modern clothes. Um, I also think I managed to make these ribbons a little too long and these ones a little too short, but that's something I can always fix later. Overall, this isn't looking too terrible. With the overall structure done, it was time to crack out the vintage lace collection. I decided to go with actually a thicker type of lace that I have that's covered in roses. It's a machine made lace, but uh, when I cut it into two pieces, it actually looks quite pretty. And then I'm just going to ruche it up along the edges and uh, layer on a different couple of trims just to see how it looks. how the panniers turned out. I like the little lace finish on the bottom and I'm tempted to add another one. I am keen to start on the petticoat because now that I have the panniers I can actually tailor it with the right silhouette. So hang around, like and subscribe to see the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Snuggled up. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh.